mutual relations. Muslim worlds don't have synergy with each other. They would rather go all the way up to Alaska and possibly Siberia to get a product rather than to go next door, which would be there right there with their next door neighbor. And in sometimes two villages that actually just there's a line between them, that's it. They will not actually, they will not talk to them. They would not sell or buy. They would not even have marriage relationship between them. And I had a number of cases, oh, can you advise us? Because my daughter or my son are going to marry from across the street, all right? Syria to a Palestinian or Egyptian to a Libyan or a Bangladeshi to a Pakistani is like a crisis. Well, 70 years ago, you're all part of the same nation. 200 years ago, you're all part of the same society. You could go from China all the way to Spain, and you're just a Muslim. That's the only thing that you were about. Today, you were just like, well, you need to be 5'4", you need to be this major, and so on, and you have to be from the particular village. If you're not from the particular village, haram. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah, and now we have to go to Dr. Phil to resolve the conflict. Right? So asabiyya has been reduced to such an extent that it's just like it's a calamity. We don't trade with each other. We don't engage with each other. We don't correspond with each other. And that results in learned failure. Learned failure. Again, we don't have synergy in business relations. We don't have synergy in any other element. We don't have synergy in terms of marriage relations, especially in this country. Right? If your daughter or son are marrying someone from the Muslim, you should just do takbir from here to judgment day. You should just like learn how to say takbir, alhamdulillah, especially in the crisis. But you say, no, no, I want somebody from the same village. And if it's be from the same yellow house like our house, then this is what I want. <laughs> like the insanity is just compounded.